Hey guys, it's Maddie. It's been a little bit, but today we are back with our brand new Trucks of War series. In this series, we will be guiding you through the guts and gore of the wartime warriors that helped drive the U.S. military and mold the modern-day model of truck manufacturing. Continuing on after our Trucks of World War II video, today we are kicking it off with Trucks of the Korean War. But before we continue, this video was made possible by our online chrome shop, jackschromeshop.com. The all-new Roadworks exhaust kits for Peterbilt and Kenworth trucks can be found on the website and come with free freight and ship within 48 hours. Save stacks on stacks when you shop with Jack's Chrome. And remember folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Trailing on the tail end of the Second World War era, the Korean War came along approximately five years after in June of 1950 and was caused by North Korea crossing the 38th parallel and conquering its southern neighbor, the Republic of Korea, and unifying the two together under a single communism command. This left the Republic of Korea in ruins and led to President Harry Truman's decision to rally our troops to reinforce and reestablish the Republic of Korea. Continuing on the curtails of World War II, there was quite a bit of crossover between the vehicles used in the following fight against Korea. Additionally, a lot of all-new aerial attacks were put into action with this war, and more advanced aircraft played a central role in combat with the new generation of jet-powered fighters arriving in the theater. With that being said, during this time, dozens of durable deuce-and-a-half trucks were still widely available to aid in war efforts, thanks to the mass manufacturing of many military models. Despite their undoubted dependability as wartime workhorses, this new war would need new warrior wagons as well. In 1951, GMC granted those wishes with the M35 models. These M35s took the 2.5-ton cargo truck torch and went on to forge its own fame as a fan-favorite cargo carrier, troop transporter, guided missile launcher, and more. Produced by a multitude of manufacturers, the M35 model would serve as a prime mover for the U.S. military for 50-plus years. Although seeing considerable service during the Second World War, the Dodge-designed three-quarter-ton WC-54 trucks also continued to carry us through the Korean conflict. Abundantly utilized as an ambulance, these WC-54 trucks featured four-wheel drive abilities as well as an additional area adapted where six casualties could be seated. Dodge didn't stop there, though. They also made their M37 models as another adaption of their well-known WC series, which fought fiercely during the Korean War. These M37 trucks tested their toughness by taking on tasks ranging from command trucks to airfield firefighting apparatus, but also played a primary part in troop transportation. Thousands of Willys Jeeps from World War II were also transferred to the Korean theater of war. And, in practice, these Jeeps and her counterparts were called upon with unmatched utility in a variety of multi-role vehicles. Taking on tasks including reconnaissance, police patrol, security, and so forth, the Jeeps also justified themselves as first-class carriers of cargo, weapons, personnel, and troops. Wherever America fought, the Jeep followed. And regardless of its renowned reputation for reliability, the truck still faced a few tactical limitations like the lethal lack of a roll bar, inadequately advanced amphibious abilities, and poor passenger protection. A little later, these willies would be replaced by the M38 and M38A1 models, or the MC and MD, respectively, which soon became the standard U.S. Army Jeep throughout the continuation of the Korean conflict. The massive model M26 tank transporter also made its appearance during the Korean War, carrying a crew of seven in a compact, cramped cab 
These tank transporting trucks took on the most trying of tasks at a towering 11 feet tall and 10 feet wide. Renowned for its rugged recovery abilities, the M26 was a monstrosity that required not only mechanically inclined crew members able to make rapid repairs under fire on the front lines, but also gunners and guides for the driver, as this giant beast of a big rig was rather difficult to drive. Deemed the Dragon Wagon, although not for its dependable dragging and tow truck capabilities, the truck coined the term because of the fiery burst of flames that would blow forth from the truck's mighty exhaust, similar to a dragon. Also during this time, the M26 truck was paired with the M15 trailer, primarily produced by the Pacific Car and Foundry Company. The Dragon Wagon was a design that was well beyond its years and would blend in well on today's battlefields with its sleek, sloped, armored appearance. Another American-manufactured armored military model is the M39, which was made by the Buick division of the General Motors Company and saw service in the Korean conflict. In fact, these vehicles played a vital role transporting troops to isolated outposts during the latter defensive phase of the war. These utility vehicles also used a modified M18 Hellcat chassis, originally designed as a prime mover for the M5 anti-tank gun, although eventually evolved into a variety of vocational uses as ambulances and ammo carriers. Speaking of evolving, eventually the M39 models were found to have a few flaws and faults, including open tops with unnecessary vulnerability to enemy fire. Because of this, a brand new M75 model was built by International Harvester to replace the M39's role and featured a freshly designed, fully enclosed cab. The fight finally ended formally in July of 1953 after just over three years, with the signing of the Korean Armistice Agreement. Although no peace treaty ever took place, and to this day, the two Koreas continue their ongoing conflict on considerably calmer terms. The Korean War concluded with approximately 3 million casualties and a larger proportion of civilian deaths than that of World War II and the Vietnam War combined, and is among the most destructive conflicts of the modern era. After the Korean conflict, the half-track truck heyday had come and gone, and in came innovative infantry fighting vehicles, or IFVs, as well as more advanced armored personnel carriers, or APCs. As these all-new vehicle variants took center stage, we saw the subtle shift towards more tech-savvy trucks. Thank you all so much for watching our brand new Trucks of War series featuring the trucks of the Korean War. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 20k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into the live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12pm noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Dave and Maddie as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We still have our truck history shirts available on our website at jackschromeshow.com, so please check them out. Save stacks on stacks at jackschromeshop.com with the all-new Roadworks exhaust kits for Peterbilt and Kenworth trucks. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week, and remember guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.